Hey there, welcome to the Zenith Live 2021 5G breakout session, where we're going to talk about 5G and zero trust for maximum security. I'm Dr. Ken Urquhart, Global Vice President for 5G Strategy at Zscaler. If you have questions or comments about this session, or you just want to learn more about 5G, please contact me at my email address listed here, connect with me on LinkedIn, and if you're looking for a new opportunity, check out our career page. Before we get started, if you have questions during this presentation, please ask them in the Q&A live chat window. And feel free to share Zenith Live session content on social media. And don't forget to check out the live Q&A and demo stations hosted by Zscaler product managers after this breakout presentation. Okay, let's get started. Quite simply, 5G is going to rock your world. It's going to drive a new digital transformation, whether you're ready or not. Those five-year plans, well, you may have to be updating them because you're going to get new use cases, new devices, and new experience sources for both you, your workers, your partners, and most importantly, your customers. And with 5G, there's going to be a lot more data flying around that's going to yield you a lot more insights. It's going to give you the closest, most personal relationship you have ever had with your customers. 5G may in fact be the new enterprise network, and you'll find out why in this talk. And of course, Zscaler is going to be there with you every step of the way to keep you secure. So 5G is coming. Get ready. A lot of our enterprise customers already know 5G is going to be important to them. How important? Well, let's look at some numbers. The Oracle Corporation surveyed C-suite executives around the world about their thoughts on 5G. And three things really popped. First, more than two thirds of the executives felt that 5G enabled services will be transformative to their customers. And almost three quarters agreed the internet of things will be revolutionized by 5G networks. And then more than four out of every five agreed that 5G networks will be transformative and have lasting impact on the way their companies do business. Which begs the question, what exactly is it about 5G that gets executives all excited? Isn't it just a speed increase from your telco? Well, no, it's actually a lot more than that. When you think about 5G, I want you to remember three words, fast, live, and massive. First, it's fast, really fast. Why? Millimeter wave. The thing about radio frequency is the higher you go in the frequency, the more bits per second you can push. In this case, with 5G, moving up to the millimeter band is promising speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second. That's fiber without the cable. And it's 10 to 100 times faster than current 4G service in areas, with a promise of 100% coverage. Not 100% coverage of the entire world, but wherever you get telco coverage, they're aiming to, for it to be 5G coverage. Second, 5G is live, as in ultra-low latency, really fast turnaround travel between a device to the workload with the results coming back, with five nines availability. And you get that liveness by using Edge, where you move compute, storage, network resources, everything closer to the devices. Remember, you can't cheat the speed of light. It only propagates so quickly. The compute workload has to come closer. And we have three kinds of edges in this world. The near edge, which is kind of a misnomer because it means nearer to the cloud, nearer to the data center, where you're getting the device travel time for packets of 5 to 20 milliseconds. You need something faster? You go to the far edge, which ranges from 1 to 5 milliseconds. And then finally, I've heard it called the far, far edge or the deep edge where you're looking at less than one millisecond because you've got compute resources at the base of the cell tower. And third, massive, as in a million devices per square kilometer connecting to 5G and you don't experience any decrease in speed, still have plenty of bandwidth and the low latency guarantee. That's at least a hundred times more than you're getting today with 4G at the best of times. And this one, like a design goal is a thousand times the bandwidth per area. And how do you achieve all that connectivity? Well, you need smarter chips. According to the chip makers, there's probably about 40% more silicon in the 5G radio chips. 
To understand the impact of just how something as simple as a speed increase can dramatically affect our world, it's useful to go back and look at the evolution of telco standards, starting in 1979 with 1G, where it was 50 kilobits per second data transfer rate. Now that enabled talk anywhere and drove demand for cell phones, even when they were big, heavy, and about the size of a shoebox, and you had to constantly keep them plugged into charge. 1991 rolls around, the 2G world, 250 kilobits per second, five times speed increase. More importantly, we went from analog signal to digital signal. So you could start sending text, email, and rudimentary web browsing using wireless access protocol. Now, 1998 happened, but something else did, smartphones. We got a modest speed bump to 384 kilobits, but we got a lot more computing power in the palm of your hand. That drove social media and streaming. The 4G world emerged in 2008 with the big speed bump, 390 times. We went to 150 megabits per second. And something really interesting happened then. We've got the mobile economy. With that higher speed and the fact that you had a proliferation of towers because we increased the frequencies to get that higher speed, which allowed for better triangulation and more accurate location tracking of the phones, you could have Uber. They know where to come pick you up. Airbnb, you can look at high quality digital images while browsing for a place to stay. And because of that speed bump meant I could stream higher quality audio to your phone and you didn't have to download songs individually for later play, you got Spotify and Pandora. Finally, 2019, 5G. 43 times speed increase to 6,400 megabits per second on average. But that means more with the Fast, yes, live, low latency, and massive, lots of simultaneous connections with no degrading of service. That means hyperconnectivity, always on, always connected. Data, more than you know what to do with. You'll be able to have the closest, most intimate relationship with your customers in the 5G world. And also with that streaming capability, think about Ultra HD, think about 8K to your device in your hand. Think about 3D video. Think about augmented and virtual reality. Things that just aren't possible today. Citizens are going to get used to high speeds pretty darn quickly, and that's going to quickly redefine user expectations. Now, there's another way to think about this. Let's talk about wireless speed and how long it takes to download a web page in four seconds. That's about the time people uh, will wait before they get bored and move on. And then download a big movie, let's say Avatar 3D at 267 gigabytes. In 1979, if I wanted to look at a web page or download a movie, I could put 25K web page in front of a customer. And it could take 18 months to download Avatar. What about 2G? Well, we're up to 125 kilobits for a web page. It's pretty good. And only three months to download the video, well, provided your connection isn't interrupted. 1998, 192K. That's starting to get to a reasonable web page. Avatar, two months. The 4G big speed bump, though. 75 megabytes served to your phone in four seconds. Avatar, downloaded overnight. It's only four hours. But now let's go to 2019 when 5G came in. Now you're looking at a 3.2 gigabyte web page being pushed in four seconds. Avatar, six minutes. So instead of waiting overnight to download it, you can download it if you really wanted to while you're waiting in line to get on the plane. But if the plane has 5G, you're not even going to have to download it either because you can stream it in 4K. And hyper-precise location services. How precise? How about down to about 10 centimeters? Why? Higher frequency radio waves that you need for 5G don't propagate as far as 4G, so you need more towers more towers, more opportunities to triangulate locations. Now, how would you use that? Think about a factory where you've got robots, autonomous vehicles, and human workers. Knowing where everything is with low latency, you can prevent a lot more accidents. You know where everything is tracking at any given time and how to deploy them more effectively. Now, along with that, you've got 90% reduction in energy usage. That's the target for 5G. Everything's gonna last 10 times longer on battery power. And you know, 5G IoT devices, not having to hook them up to the power grid, 
being able to put batteries in them that last a long time. I mean, I've had one maker of an IoT device tell me he's going to put a 10-year lifespan battery in his device. You basically set it, get the telemetry from it, and when the battery runs out, you're done with it. Think of how the use cases are going to be. Where could you use a multitude of low-power devices for monitoring and optimizing your business? And network slicing. This is seriously cool. 5G is trying to enable multiple virtual networks running on a shared physical network. How do you do it? Well, it's kind of like SD1 on steroids. You're building on software defined networking and network function virtualization concepts. And it'll maximize the flexibility of 5G networks. It'll maximize them a lot. You're going to get an end to end virtual network where you've got your own SLA, your own uh, stipulated latency, how critical it is for the packets to be delivered, how much bandwidth you need, and you can build them up and take them down almost on demand. And that's how you're going to enable a lot of the key 5G use cases. It's also going to change how you think about networks. You're not looking at long-term network, uh, network connections you set up and kind of don't have to deal with operators. You're now going to be able to put up networks on demand to meet your needs at that moment. Let's take a look at how that works. Well, when you're doing network slicing, you take this combination of 5G plus edge compute plus cloud compute, and you create these end-to-end -end virtual networks. The first they're thinking of two slices. Obviously, a consumer slice, basically what you have today, where you're going to continue to use your phone, continue to connect to office apps, continue to use your laptop, check your mail, uh, watch streaming video and audio, carry out retail transactions, book hotel vacations. The other one is a dedicated machine to machine IoT slice, where you've got guaranteed delivery, maybe not high bandwidth, but guaranteed. And you can use it to carry out telemetry, logistics, industry 4.0, uh, in a lot of cases where you don't need a lot of high volume, ultra low latency. Now, starting with these two, the really dependable machine to machine and the generally consumer slice that kind of looks like today, only faster, we're going to add things like critical performance slice, where your robots in your factory are not going to run into and harm your employees, where your autonomous vehicles are going to be able to stop when someone steps up in front of it because the latency is such that it can react very, very quickly, or remote surgery with medicine, and as many other slices as you need, whether you're doing massive multiplayer gaming, you're doing uh, inference at the edge, or you have security applications. Now this gets back to all this technology and changes are going to enable a lot of new use cases. I mean, everything from connected health, immersive retail, precision asset tracking, remember at the uh, hospital example we talked about, um, energy optimization, facilities management, uh, things like being able to offload cargo containers remotely with your employees safely tucked away in a secured building, and you don't need to have people up on the cranes worrying about, uh, you know, the dangers associated with that. Even down to more intelligent navigation, uh, autonomous driving, smart metering, safe cities, smart cities. You get the idea. So let's look at your new 5G world. Let's start out with today. Devices able to connect to the internet, going back to your on-prem and your public cloud workloads. Now let's add 5G, the speed bump. That'll get you the high throughput. That'll get you the high speed. That'll get you, get you the low latency. That'll get you the edge cloud platforms. You've made a big investment in the cloud. You've trained your developers, you developed your systems on it, and you now you're going to have to refactor to realize new use cases. Well, cloud providers are anticipating that. They're providing versions of their cloud APIs out at the edge so you can use the same development and deployment tools to refactor your apps and deploy them where they make the most sense. So that means when you want to deploy a solution, you think about what are my latency needs, what are my SLAs for performance, cost of backhaul, the overall economics? And once you decide that, you can figure out whether to place it at the device IoT edge, out at the deep edge, 
telco operator edges, the deep and far edges, or the near edge, your enterprise edge, or your public cloud edge. And finally, in this refactored world, we're looking at AI model training, HPC monitoring, edge updating happening back in the cloud or on-prem. And out at the edge, you're orchestrating models, doing inference in real time, robotics, low latency, running at massive scale, um, mass recognition of images being fed in by security cameras or drones. But now here's the big thing. Where does your network start or end in this world? We're talking about being able to send up end-to-end -end virtual network slices across multiple providers, possibly across cloud provider, multiple telcos, in order to get your job done. Are you going to own that network, or is it going to turn out like we did in the cloud world, where we've migrated our apps to the cloud, and now we're migrating to a world where the network can be rented? And that's going to be a huge change. The idea that there is an intranet and the rest of the internet kind of starts to go away. Now, all this great stuff, what's the catch? Well, there's two 5G surprises. First, commonly people think it's just another operator service, along with it's just a speed bump. And the other one is, I've heard 5G is secure by design. Why do I need to worry about cybersecurity? So let's drill down into both of those. Another interesting fact about 5G is there's been extensive re-architecture and refactoring of the telco networks so that now it's mostly TCP IP based and there's nothing stopping an enterprise with sufficient resources from building its own private 5G network. And that means everything from building a core 5G offering, hooking it up to radios, leasing spectrum, and deploying apps on it. It can be expensive, but it's now an option that really didn't exist before. And of course, at the other end, you can go completely with a 5G network operator and get absolutely everything like you do today. Basically, get a SIM, pay a price, pick your network slice. Or you can go kind of in between. You can go to the 5G operator and you can provide your own edge, dedicated equipment. You could do private 5G in your factory floor and connect to an operator to get 5G outside of that. It's just the range of control now where you can go from completely outsourcing to completely insourcing, and whether you want a telco operator to be involved at all to whether you're all in with them. The choice is yours. But that leads to another issue I want to talk to you about. And that's in this new world. There's more data, more services, more devices, more operating systems, and more unfamiliarity. The 5G attack surface is huge. It's the merging of everything you need to worry about as a telco to everything you need to worry about as an enterprise. And there's lots of botnet opportunities given the fact that we're now looking at millions, if not billions of devices connecting. There's vertically and integrated 5G use cases give a dramatically expanded attack surface. And the 5G virtualized networks governing this are still evolving in their protocols. There's just a lot of things that need to be ironed out. Thing is, there's also a steep 5G security learning curve for both security professionals, enterprise IT, and for contractors. Everyone lacks the breadth of knowledge and experience to make sure everything is secure. It's just how it is when you do such a big change to give so many new features and services. So, what do you do? Well. Fortunately, there's a solution to this, where you don't have control of your networks, where you don't know the state of the security in them, where you don't know if they've been penetrated or not. And that's the zero trust model. Here in the United States, we are really embracing the zero trust security model. In fact, on May 12th this year, the President of the United States issued an executive order to improve the nation's cybersecurity. And that's to implement a zero trust architecture. The hallmarks of the architecture are you assume a breach is inevitable or it's already occurred. You constantly limit access to only what's needed. And you always look for anomalous or malicious activity everywhere, ever vigilant. 
And that's really like every data packet on every network is verified and escorted from source to destination with no assumptions and no unexpected side trips allowed. So how do you do that? Well, you implement comprehensive risk monitoring. You have granular risk-based access controls. Everything has to know where it's going and who's allowed to go there. A coordinated system of security automation throughout your entire infrastructure. And that means you basically put AI everywhere. And the goal is to protect the critical data assets in real time in a dynamic threat environment where you don't know who's there or could be trying to watch. And why? Because this approach prevents compromise, prevents lateral movement, prevents exfiltration of data, and mostly prevents surprises. And that's just in time for 5G. Because zero trust is where you go when you want to be secure in an environment where you have networks that you don't quite understand the pedigree, you don't quite understand are they safe or not. When you have new protocols that are just been evolved, when you have new ways of doing things and massive refactoring of the networks to deliver things like low latency, high bandwidth, network slicing, hyper-precise location services. Zero Trust Security Model was made for 5G. All right, time to 5G impact. How long have you got? I've had people say, oh, it's going to be years before this is here. We don't have to worry about it. Well, not entirely true. To understand how fast this is happening, let's look at the 4G rollout and what it did to the market. 4G had this advantage. That it was the confluence of LTE, smartphone, and cloud coming together at the same time, and they reinforced one another. And that confluence was estimated to create about 160 new revenue streams, each creating over a billion dollars in value. And that's 15 times more than the 3G world. Now, and it caused the market disruptions. Remember, Airbnb disrupted hotels. Uber and Lyft disrupted the taxi services. And when did they happen? Well, they happened when you got about 25 to 30% 4G market penetration compared to 3G. And right now, by mid-2021, there's about 100 million 5G subscriptions globally. That's running three times faster than we did for 4G. And 4G had a much bigger speed bump, but didn't have what we have this time, which is a confluence of many more technologies. It's not just 4G smartphone cloud. It's 5G, edge, private edge, edge cloud, edge AI, AR, VR, industry 4.0, robots, autonomous vehicles. That's going to spawn a lot more than 160 new revenue streams. And when do we reach that tipping point of 25% subscriber penetration? How about late 2022? So we've got about 18 months to prepare, not five years. Next steps. What should you do today to get ready so you're not caught off guard? Now, I know what some of you are thinking. So how is 5G going to impact the perception of my brand and my offerings? Well, you can answer that by starting with three questions. First, how could 5G power new alternatives to today's offerings? Second, which offerings are not unique to me and they could be displaced by competitor offerings that incorporate 5G enabled experiences? And then finally, how could competitors deploy 5G to compete more effectively against me? Six months from now, you should be selecting 5G use cases that matter to your customers. You've done your homework. Start proving out those use cases. There is a lot of technology available today to prototype and a lot of people able to help you move from prototype to production. And you're going to be thinking about what do you have to refactor to take advantage of 5G and Edge? Not all of the things you do are going to need the ultra low latency. They'll just take advantage of the new speed and the new bandwidth. So. You're tipping your toe, dipping your toe into 5G is not going to be as difficult as you think. And don't forget about zero trust, because there's probably not going to be an intranet when we really get into 5G. And now, 18 months from now, late 2022, when disruption starts kicking in, you want to be on a path to deploy your first 5G enhanced offerings. And that should start opening that new world 
to better serve your customers and deliver some absolutely outstanding experiences. So thank you for attending the 2021 Zenith Live 5G breakout session. Don't forget, take the session survey. Feel free to share Zenith Live session content on social media. Visit Zenith Live Alliance Arena and check out the live Q&A and demo stations hosted by Zscaler product managers. Again, I'm Ken Urquhart. I'm the Global Vice President of 5G Strategy at Zscaler. Please reach out to me if you want to know more about 5G use cases, what you can do, how Zero Trust Security is going to work in this new world. Connect with me on LinkedIn, find out the latest from me, and think about a career at Zscaler. We're always hiring. Thank you.